Good morning, everybody. I have some big news to share with you. Undoubtedly, the biggest change on the Nomadic Fanatic channel in the five years I have been here that you guys have ever seen. Uh, first of all, be mindful here in the Texas area last night here, if you were around this area, we got hit hard with storms, thunder, high wind. So she's all wet and dirty right now. I just rinsed her off real quick. And as you can see, the blue tape still on there. The windshield has cured for its 24 hours before I even drove it off. I'm just keeping the tape on there for a few extra days because I'm packing it up anyway. But um, this is my new 2012 Coachman Murata, aptly named Miranda the Murata. That's right. I want to do a video tour before we even move into Miranda here. But first, a couple quick things. Ford V10 Triton Ford Super Duty F-Series truck chassis. Yes. Obviously, you see one slide and two slides. You know what? Every RV tour you've ever seen starts on the outside. Boring. Let's go inside first. Uh, but first, you'll, you'll notice how much, maybe you'll notice how much higher the, the floor is on a Class A compared to a Class C. And so there's automatic coach steps. So when you open the door, automatically. And then I like the idea of turning off the automatic so that if you're opening and closing up your door right here, these will stay open for the entire duration at your campsite. But let's go on into Miranda the Murata. Ooh, yeah. So for this video and probably only this video ever, I've got pretty much every light on in here uh, just to help show a little bit of this. Also up front, I've got the massive curtain across. Otherwise, it would just be whited out and you wouldn't be able to see anything in here. But yeah, let's start up front. So we've got the two captain's chairs that are both of them completely rotate around. I just don't have this one rotated right now, but that really opens up the space. And like I said, a, a two-piece curtain that goes all the way around the window. I like the wood look panel up here. There is the backup camera, which I'll show you later when we get outside. And that Ford interface, 34,000 miles. There's some switches for the fans. Two fans in both corners could be aimed on me or if you needed help defrosting this massive new windshield up there. What is that? LCI electronic leveling, say what? Yes. So easy to use guys. Just keep the engine running when you get to the campground. Put the e-brake on, turn it on, do auto leveling and this sucker will auto level your RV. But obviously tilt, steering, uh, cruise control, air, con I mean, it's just, it's massive up here. And look how much room is on the driver's side right there. Very comfortable. Right now I've got all of the old uh, receipts and paperwork and stuff up there. There is a Magnavox TV that's not a smart TV and it's not even a very good position for a TV, but it is there right now. More storage here. Also has these visors in case you're short like me and you don't want the sun in your eye on the highway. Hang on, let me take this off. Okay, on the non-slide side here in the front is where the dinette's at. Corian tabletop that turns this into a bed if you need it also. Lots of storage up here, just like my last RV. There's even one little one up here for some stuff. On the first driver's side slide here, you've got the couch, love seat, and also the little part of the kitchen area here. So you have the stove and the oven and the microwave. There's this little plexiglass thing here so that, you know, oils and stuff don't come over onto the couch. The couch is comfortable enough, but eventually we may upgrade this to dual recliner movie theater seats of, of some sort. That is on the slide, so it's going to be raised up a little bit. I'll, I'll look into that more, but for right now, it's actually quite comfortable. And you can see how big this aisleway is with the slide out. Since I brought it up, yes, this RV is fully functional and comfortable with both slides in if you're looking for not not sticking out as much in a Walmart parking lot or if you're urban camping or something like that. Stick around to the very end of the video. I will bring both slides in after I close out the video and show you what it looks like there. I do actually like the current backsplash they have on here with the Corian countertops. The sink area in here is a, a dual sink. They included these also. I don't know if them on both sides all the time they rattle a lot on the road maybe some might need some rubber grommets on the corners 
or something. But um, yeah, not a whole lot of kitchen space, but you could always add an extra table compartment right here that comes up behind the stove. I will just mention there is also a lot of room. That's about 14 inches back there, so it's pretty deep back there as well. Uh, going back to the couch, yes, more storage, very deep storage. And above the sink as well. This needs a shelf though. If this is where food's gonna be stored, it needs one or maybe even two shelves in here. Otherwise it's pointless. You could stack everything here and then you've got all that for nothing. So that's a future project. Sorry about the light coming in right there, but the fridge and freezer, exact same Americana that I recently put in Yoda, the new one. All automatic. We already got some pizza and other stuff in there. And the fridge. Uh-huh, yeah, we're trying MGD together instead of Bud Light and Miller Light. It's not bad. Now we're gonna walk past the halfway point of the RV and here's where things get a little strange, you might say. Because the entire rear slide starts with currently two dual bunk beds and the dressers of the bedroom back behind this door right here where Dressy's at, and I don't want him to get out right now. The, this is not going to remain here forever, so years from now, I'm sure we'll look back, and hopefully sometime in the future, this area is converted into a, a dual office space for Angela and I, since we both work on the computer for a living. Uh, for right now, I don't mind using it for storage. Uh, one of the cat litter boxes is gonna be right here as well as one in, in, in the bedroom until the cats are completely comfortable with each other. That way we have a hard door to separate the, the uh, two kitties. Uh, they have curtains and stuff. And you know, I like I said, I got a good price on this RV. It has everything we wanted and needed. We just has the bunk bed area right now, which is removable. So don't worry. Right now, I'm loving the storage. Before we move into the bathroom, Dual air conditioners, you saw, because it's a 50 amp, so only one of them at a time if you're on 30 amp right now. We've got the Dometic thermostat here, which is completely automatic fan, air conditioning, or furnace. So if you put it on cool and set that, your air conditioning will come through. Of course, it is ducted through the ceiling with the air conditioner and fan. It is amazing. We had to use the air conditioner last night because of the humidity. And then this morning, we used the furnace. That's right. So select furnace on this one, select your temperature, and then it's gonna turn on underneath. That is the furnace intake. The furnace itself is back behind there on the outside. And then you've got vents like this throughout the RV including inside the bathroom, which we will check out in just a minute. This is a remote control for the fantastic vent right there. Water pump, water heater, both slide buttons in and out. There's a manual override in case your motor goes out and you still need that slide to come in. Generator starter, it has 642 hours. Here's the monitor for LPG. Batteries, uh, not quite full. Uh, fresh black gray, I'm not sure what aux tank is. So fresh water, Toilet water, shower water. Does anybody know what aux tank is? Or is that just not used in this RV? I don't know for sure. LP gas leak detector. There is the onboard converter and charger in that port right here. And the bathroom is here, guys. Oh boy. Look at that. A sliding glass shower. Okay. Ooh. Isn't that nice? It is super clean, actually. So, and I think it's a little wider. Although, for practicality reasons, I just don't know about the glass. It comes with this to latch it on so that it's not rolling around while you're driving. But I still wonder about having glass in a moving, bouncing RV that moves a lot. We'll have to wait and see. Looking down here, we got the uh, toilet, which is not a Dometic toilet, but guess what? It is a porcelain toilet from the factory, which I love. And there's one of those heater vents so that when you're taking a shower in the bathroom and the door is closed, it will still be warm in here. Well, and for that point, cool. There is an air conditioner vent, which also makes it nice and cool in here while the door is closed. Not a fantastic vent there, but it does have a vent. This isn't really a medicine cabinet, but it's as close to a medicine cabinet as we're going to get in an RV. And um, I think we may have to modify this or add some more of these or put baskets in here uh, later just to utilize the space as much as possible. Let me get Drezzy out of the bedroom and then we'll go look at the bedroom. Oh yeah, here we go. The master bedroom with a walk around full queen bed. 
this is going bye-bye, don't worry. This duvet cover is definitely going to get swapped out here soon. But his and her nightstands, one there, one over there. I do have the uh, reading lights on right now and the shades drawn mostly, just so you can see. And while there aren't too many of them, the bedroom does have a light switch, which operates the two overhead lights to add a little more light in here. Lots of storage above the bed. And since this part of the bedroom is also part of the slide with the bunk area, that's what turns this into a walk around bed. So again, at the end of the video, you'll, you'll see what this looks like. And also gives you access to all of the compartments, obviously stuff. I don't really need all the room for the hem. These are really deep too, but hanging clothes. Angela may use hers for hanging clothes, but mine is most likely going to have layers of shelving instead so that I can fold clothes and, and utilize my space a, a little more is probably what I'll do. Again, another Magnavox TV that is not a smart TV here in the bedroom. A DVD player in there. Anyway, I just wanted to get this video up. This is a very quick tour, but wanted to show you the most important stuff of the RV, right? And the sun is coming out out there. Fantastic. Let's step outside and do the exterior tour now if the sun will hold up. So like I said, with the winds last night, we lost power a couple times. Uh, but on the outside here, uh, let's just uh, go around. You can obviously see how tall this thing is. It's actually... Um, the, the roof air conditioner is the tallest point at 12.2, and I'm working with 11.6 on my old RV, but <laughs> no uh, doors. And I made that mistake at the dealership trying to get into this beast. Walked over the driver's door, went, oh, side door. Anyway, on the outside, it has a full body paint. Okay, so this is all the striping. Everything is full body paint. I especially like the gray lower third right here. That's going to help hide a lot of the road dirt and stuff, make it look a little cleaner on the road. The awning is not out right now, obviously, because of the wind, but that's push button uh, power awning. I think it is a 12 footer, 12 or 16 footer up there. All of the, the decals are in really good decals. Those are decals. This is paint. Yeah, uh, in really good shape. The big one is tires. These are 19 and a half inch tires with 70 miles on all the way around. So $3,000 worth of tires the dealer put on for us with some awesome good tread in there. These are BF Goodrich 19.5 inch brand new tires on the coach. Yes, what a good feeling. I showed you the automatic stabilizer jacks button. Here are the two front ones and the two rear ones are also back there. What an amazing feature that is going to be on the road. Storage up the yin yang. I mean, there's a lot of garages. Look at all that room. Already started to put a few things into that one for future projects. I'm not particularly excited about these two being underneath the slide, but they are still accessible. It may not be the most convenient spot. There's the propane. That is a 20 pound propane tank. So I have doubled the size of propane capacity. Over here, again, lots and lots of storage. On the back here, you can see the paint's really good and clean. There is the backup camera right there. Still need to get a locking gas cap, but yes, this is the gas fill on the back of the driver's side of the RV here. And uh, that just means you need to have enough clearance up front to get out there. Remember, this is a 32 footer. If you have the two gas pumps, one here and one a little farther up, you're just gonna pull forward all the way and fill up on the rear one. It'll be interesting to see if we run into any problems with this, if I have to stick way out in the driveway of a gas station because of this, but um, that's where they put it. That's how they do it. But locking gas cap is very, very important upgrade soon. This is the power bay for 50 amp. It's running underneath right now. 50 amp means two circuits on the RV. I've never had a 50 amp RV, so that is new. Of course, the 5500 Onan generator right there. But I'm not going to open it up right now, but the other thing I like about this is it's an easy oil change system where you just pull a valve, empty it down below, and then you can have easy access to the oil filter. So I'll be doing an oil change soon, though. The oil doesn't look too good right now. Furnace right there works great down here. Okay, this is the dump and flush station and winterizing station. This is all new to me as well but essentially city water connection. There's a sewer tank flusher right there. I don't know why, but this doesn't have a latch up here to hold it to. So I can't point to things. Actually, I'm gonna put my shoulder and do it like this. City water there, city fill there. It does have an outdoor shower that I don't think I'll ever use, but the, the drain system for the dump is always connected. There's the valves. See one valve there, one valve there. See how it goes down into this kind of a boom thing. 
well you unscrew this and then pull it out that's how you dump the tank so it's always just packed in here nicely i like that part and under the driver's slide lots more storage Oh, let's see the roof eh, it's just too slippery up on the roof right now i'm not going to show you what the roof looks like but i will say there is room for solar on the roof and angela and i have talked about putting our priorities in order for the upgrades in the rv and solar is top priority i mean top before i even change the oil in the generator we are looking at well, I don't want to give too much away, but can I say an epic solar install on Miranda here? That's what I will say. You will not have to wait too long for that update. Okay, guys? And so today, uh, I'm going to be moving out of the U-Haul truck into the RV. Angela is going to be moving out of her van and into the RV. And we're going to take our time for maybe two, three, four days. I don't know how long exactly it's going to take. You guys just uh, be patient with me. I am super excited. I'm kind of a little stressed also. I've got a lot on my plate right now. But once we hit the road and head out of Texas, I am going to be feeling good. Uh, interacting with the cats has been really well. They came into the RV on mutual ground. You know, they were, they were, they were both in there sniffing around. It wasn't somebody else's RV yet. So I, I just feel like everything is really working. Everything's really working. And, uh, I, I must say that if you're looking for an RV in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you got to check out the motor coach outlet greg's rv there the, the website is buy here pay here rv.com you can check out their inventory at that site and go talk to ben or nathan tell them nomadic fanatic sent you they are going to get you in an rv they're going to find a way they have great customer service out of all the dealerships i've seen around the country this one's the one guys I'm, seriously go check them out if you are looking to get in an rv you are going to get into an rv okay definitely check them out tell them i sent you over there and uh show me pictures of what you guys got i'm excited i am so excited but i am also tired i didn't get much sleep last night either so all right so what does it look like with the slides in let's put the first slide in It's a lube. And slide two in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So just wanted to point out that there is clearly lots, not, I want to say lots of room, but it is totally functional to walk through here. You can even sit on the couch and put my feet on the dinette seat right there. So this is... This is going to be fine. As for the bedroom area, same exact thing. And plenty of walkway through here. The slide out just cuts off the ability to walk around the bed. Okay, there's still room on that side. And obviously everything's functional except for those drawers right down there. Okay. And lastly, the bathroom. Doesn't open all the way, but it's obviously opens enough to utilize the bathroom. So in a, in a case where we do not want the slides out or it's not appropriate to have the slides out or something, everything works fine in my opinion. Bear with me guys, more updates to come. Bye.